my goal here is I really want to pass on some information to you all that makes you feel as though you have the capability to leave here and kind of move forward and understand what are the different stories that I want to tell with the metrics that we are recording? What are the different stories that our website metrics can tell? And so the first area that we are really going to focus in on today for the first half of this is how do we choose metrics that are meaningful for our organization, right? I think that oftentimes we go into Google Analytics and we see a million different metrics showing up, a million different interfaces, and it really feels like a fire hose of information is coming at us and we don't know, should we track this one thing this month and another thing another month or what, what are the metrics that are meaningful? So we're gonna walk you through a framework for how do we select metrics from our website that are meaningful to our organization. Secondly, we're gonna talk about how do we build a story into our reporting, right? If you are in charge of reporting metrics out to different folks at your organization, how do we make them actionable? How do we make them exciting? How do we use them to elevate um, opportunities and also celebrate successes? Because that's a really important part of this as well. Thirdly, for those of you that are familiar, um, the current version of Google Analytics called Universal Analytics expires. June 30th. That means if you do not have the new version of Google Analytics set up on your website right now, or as of June 30th, you will no longer have data being collected from your website. Um, so if you haven't heard of that, uh, there's a lot of information out there. Rooted's also happy to be a resource around it. And we're going to talk a little bit about it today. We're not going to get into the technical side of what that transition looks like, but we will start to talk about what are some of the equivalent metrics in Google Analytics for with some of the metrics you might be recording right now in Universal Analytics. So helping to get prepared for that transition. And then finally here, momentum to get started, right? I mentioned this at the outset. We really wanna give you a set of tools and an understanding, teach you to fish, so to speak, of a way for you to think about what metrics are meaningful and how to create story and meaning and actionable things out of those. So this is going to be a hands-on workshop. We're gonna walk you through the first part of our framework. You're going to do an activity around that. Then we'll walk you through the second portion and you'll do an activity around that. And hopefully between those two activities, you'll start to feel comfortable to look at your website, to look at your organization and say, these are the things that are meaningful to us. And I feel like I can carry on the work. But if you come out of here and there are additional things that you feel like you want to discuss with us, stick around to the end. We have a couple of free tools that we wanna to share with you all. And we also have an offer for you at the end of this um, so that we can help continue this conversation. Right into the good stuff. So what I want to share with you today and the crux of the bulk of what we're gonna spend our time talking about today is a framework that we use a lot of times with our clients, the way that we think about our organization. But this is a way to kind of ask ourselves a series of questions that helpfully helps us decide what metrics are most valuable to our organization. And then the second portion of this, we'll start to think about how do we develop a narrative or a story around some of the reporting that we're doing. And to help us through this process, we're gonna be looking at a case study an anonymized case study of sorts um, that kind of help us, helps us walk through and gives examples of this process in real life. So the way that we break down these five questions or our framework here is into two sections. The first three questions we're gonna hop into in just a second. This is gonna be sort of the metric selection section of this work. We're gonna walk through these three questions step-by-step step and start to think about based on who we are as an organization, what our website does and the actions that people take and the journeys they take to do that, what are the metrics that are meaningful to us? The second section is really about storytelling. It's about how do we make our reports meaningful to folks? How do we make reports that are specific to what they care about? And how do we build a narrative around that that's meaningful and actionable? I saw that a few times in the chat. So, We'll walk through these two. After we do the first three questions, we're gonna hop into an activity where you all can go through this process for yourselves. Then we'll come back, 
we'll do a little bit of a share out so that we can all learn from each other. And in the second section, we'll go through these two questions again. You'll do an activity and a little bit of a share out there at the end of the session here. So as I said, throughout the course of this, we're going to be using a case study as a way to follow along with these questions and give real world examples to how things worked. Now, I wanna be clear, as far as my research shows, I didn't find any organizations called Immigrant Legal Alliance, and we're calling it ILA for short. I wanted to come up with a name that makes this anonymous. If there is an ILA out there, I apologize to them. This is not their information. I was just trying to come up with something that was anonymized. So ILA educates immigrants, community organizations, and the legal sector to help build a US legal immigration system that respects and values everyone's rights. So this organization is going, this fictitious organization is going to be what we follow through the rest of this workshop. And for those of you that wanna follow along at home, I have an example, I'll put the link in the chat here. And this example is a um, filled in version of the worksheet that eventually we're gonna do together in this workshop. After we get through the third question, we're gonna stop and you're going to fill this out. And then for question four and five, you're gonna do the same. Okay, so if you wanna follow along, I think this is really helpful to give some examples of what we are thinking about. All right, so with that, let's just jump right into these uh, questions and start to work through this framework. So the first question that we have on our list is, what are the outcomes your organization seeks to achieve with your work? So. I wanna be really clear that what we're trying to do with this question is put aside metrics for a moment, put aside your website for a moment and start to think really broadly and high level. Um, what does your organization seek to achieve, right? For those of you that have gone through a logic model, logic model process before or a theory of change are probably familiar with this concept of outcomes or strategies and an outcome is how the work you do impacts or affects the communities and individuals you are in service to. So you'll see here in this definition, we're not talking about metrics. We're not talking about our website. We're trying to start this whole process at sort of a 30,000 foot level, right? So let's look at ILA's three outcomes that they are seeking to achieve. The first is to increase immigrant community awareness about their rights within the US legal system. The second is to build the capacity of the legal community to defend the rights of immigrants within the US legal system. And the last one here is support systemic legal reform through on the ground organizing and advocacy. So these are the three strategies or outcomes that ILA uses to push their mission forward. Right, And so for those of you following along at home on our example spreadsheet or worksheet here, sorry, you will see that we have our three outcomes listed under question number one. So moving down to question number two, this is how does the website support those outcomes, right? And the purpose of this question is to start to think about based on the outcomes that we are trying to achieve as an organization, are there programs? Is there content? Are there transactions that take place on your website that help support that work, right? So we're starting to drill down a little bit. We're starting to think about our website more broadly. For the purpose of this exercise, we are just gonna focus in on one outcome so that we can drill down and understand how ILA's website supports this one outcome. And I would recommend as you start to think about this and specifically for um, you know, this particular workshop, try and focus in on just one outcome. It starts to get really overwhelming if you try and do all of these outcomes at once. Um, and so for the purposes of this, we're just gonna focus in on building capacity of the legal community to defend the rights of immigrants, okay? So when we look at ILA's fictitious website, there are two things or two areas of the website that help support this outcome. Uh, number one, they post legal resources and guides on the website in a section of the website. And the second thing is that they hold uh, online webinars and seminars. And so there is an event calendar 
with RSVP uh, capabilities on the website as well. So as we start to think about, okay, we have these things or these areas of the website that move the outcomes forward, what are some of the things that actually represent the success of these areas of the website? What are the actions that take place in these areas of the website to uh, indicate to us that things are working, right? So in this case, success looks like for us in the legal resources area, we want users to come to the website and download resources. On the event side of things, we want users to come to the website and RSVP to events. So again, for those of you following along at home, under step two or question number two, we have our outcome outlined. We have the two areas of the website that support just that one outcome. And then we have the associated actions that represent success for that area. Okay, so we're starting to drill down. We're starting to get a little bit more specific. This final question really is the crux of all of this, where we start to move from understanding um, like broad ideas into thinking about specific metrics. So in this final question of this section, we are asking, what is the website visitor's journey that leads to these actions, right? And what we're trying to do here is we understand now what the actions are. So for instance, the event RSVP, we're gonna start to work backwards to say, what are the things that happen? What are the things that the user does before they actually RSVP, okay? And so again, for the purpose of this example, we're just gonna drill down onto one area of their website. And again, for the purposes of kind of keeping things focused for this exercise, I'd recommend that you also do the same when you're going through this exercise for yourself. Now, in order to drill down, we're gonna look specifically at the event RSVPs. I want to kind of take a second to ground all of this conversation in a philosophy or an idea called an engagement pathway, or some people may have heard of engagement funnels before. Um, the idea around this concept is that whether you're making a purchase, let's say a can of soda or a car, or you're signing up for an event or you're signing up for a service, there are three steps that every individual takes in order to actually carry out that process, right? The first of those steps is just simply awareness. And it sounds kind of obvious, right? That duh, Andrew, obviously you need to be aware in order to you know, purchase something or RSVP to an event. But honestly, this is actually maybe one of the harder portions of this whole funnel, right? Um, this is the stage at which people are going from not knowing that something exists, not knowing that an event exists, not knowing that your organization exists, to the stage where they know, right? And this can happen in a lot of different ways. This is what we talk about when we're talking about marketing. They can find you through a Google search. It could be social media, an event. It could be an advertisement on a bus. It could be a conversation with a colleague. But in some way, the person likely is going to be going from not understanding who you are, not knowing who you are to knowing who you are. Now, in some cases, um, people, might not, people might already know who you are as an organization, but they might not know that an event is taking place. So this can, take, this can be um, the same for people that are not familiar with your organization at all, as well as for people that are. Um, so yeah. So awareness could be something that doesn't just happen on your website. That's right. And um, in the case of what we're going to be talking about today, because we're focused in on um, website analytics, we are going to talk about awareness taking place on the website. And we're specifically going to be talking about awareness taking place for a specific event, because that's the, sort of the user journey that we're tracking. But yes, I mean, there are definitely plenty of other traditional ways that um, awareness comes about. But there are also ways in which we can measure that through metrics. Um, the second stage of this is engagement, right? And engagement is when somebody is starting to read or watch or engage in some way with the content on your website. And they're starting to understand what is the value of this service? What's the value of this event, right? And they're starting to think, will this event help solve some of the problems or questions I might have? And if the answer is yes, then they're going to carry out that action 
or what we call convert, right? And that's gonna help move your mission and your outcomes forward. So this is the foundational piece of a lot of what I like to think about when I'm thinking about metrics, because this journey that visitors take is a story. And when I think about websites, I think about how your website is obviously a collection of content, but it is a collection of user journeys, right? We are constantly thinking about how are people moving through our website in order to have them take some sort of action? And especially when I'm thinking about metrics, I like to not only look at all of the metrics for these different stages, I like to report all of the metrics for these different stages. And so this is really the crux of this first part of the framework. So I wanna make sure that I'm being as clear as possible. And really, if you understand this portion of it, this is where you, can feel empowered to then go out and look at your metrics, look at the journeys on your website and select some of those things that are meaningful to your organization. So let's just walk through really quickly what this journey looks like from a metric standpoint. Remember, we are looking at RSVPs to events are the ultimate actions that we want people to take. So in terms of an awareness, and there's no 100% right answer here, but in terms of the things that we're thinking about um, for this example, we're going to say that when people visit our event calendar, that is a sign that they are going to become aware of that event, right? So in Google Analytics 4, we have a metric called views. In Universal Analytics, that was previously called page views. But basically, this is anytime somebody comes to visit your site. On the engagement track, we have time spent on event pages. This is what we call an engaged session. This is a new metric in Google Analytics 4. I really like this as a way to understand if people are engaged with the content on your site. Um, this could be if people are reviewing the event page to understand the description, understand the activities of the event. They're, maybe they're reviewing the agenda. And if that fits, if they see value in attending that event, they are going to RSVP. So, if hopefully this starts to make sense because you can break things down into the stages of engagement. And if you're looking at your example, and this will be in your worksheet as well, we have a cheat sheet down at the bottom that just kind of gives you some common metrics that we like to think about for both Universal Analytics and Google Analytics for, for each stage of this conversion funnel. Right, so hopefully that's a good cheat sheet. And you'll also see in here, if you're not familiar with some of these metrics, we've also added in definitions. So this is in both our example worksheet and in the worksheet that we're about to share with you um, in a minute. Now, this is not a comprehensive list of every single Google analytic metric, but these are some common ones that I would recommend getting started with. And hopefully this is a good way to um, keep you all kind of focused in on a certain number of areas. So hopping into our second section here, you'll recall that we are talking about storytelling um, or data storytelling, and um, maybe that's a fancy term for reporting, right? About how do we create a report based on the metrics that we've selected that really catches people's attention and makes our work actionable. Um, I've heard from a number of you at the outset that you know deciding not only what, what metrics are important, but also how do we make it meaningful to people, right? So let's talk a little bit about why data storytelling matters in the first place. Um, number one is that numbers by themselves really don't mean anything, right? We want storytelling to bring in emotion, that human um, element that you just can't get from saying, hey, your blog post got 500 page views. You know, what does that mean? I'm not really sure, <laughs> right? So being able to bring in some meaning is really important. Context, as I just kind of said, is really important. Is that number good? Is that number bad? Are we improving? Are we declining? Is it the same as it was before? It's really important to give people context about what numbers mean. Um, also importantly, you know, you may be able to predict and forecast the future based on past performance. If we know that our DACA event or our DACA webinar got 50 uh, RSVPs this year, maybe we should prepare for 60 next year, right? And what does that look like? So predictive analytics obviously is a pretty, it's further along down the road 
Um, a lot of what we're trying to do right now at the outset is understand what happened and what we might be able to change. But predictive analytics definitely is something that we can consider. And then lastly, I mentioned this at the outset, but I think we underestimate the power of celebration, inspiration, and energy around this stuff. You know, if I had somebody come to me and say, hey, Andrew, that blog post that you put up the other day or the story that you put up the other day was our most popular story of the year. I would pay attention to that. That would catch my eye. That would make me energized to do my work, right? And so sometimes it's just about if you can't catch people's attention all the time, it's about dropping those nuggets and letting them know that the things that they're doing are working and they should celebrate it, right? We want to put some meaning into all the, the effort that people are putting into this stuff. So let's talk a little bit about what are some of the elements that are really important for data storytelling. Number one, know your audience. Not all numbers are going to be important to everyone, right? We're going to talk about this, and really this is question number four. If you're reporting something to a volunteer manager or a program manager, what you're reporting to them might be very different to what you're reporting to the ED board member, uh, you know, a, a grant maker or something like that. So know who you're talking to and um, you don't need to report everything to them, right? If you can, regular reporting is really important. It builds familiarity with what your site typically does, and it builds some interest. Now, I know I hear all the time from clients that they say, look, uh, nobody asks me about what's going on on the website. They don't really care, but they're putting a lot of effort into this area of the site. And I understand that um, not everybody has time to think about this stuff, but what I have seen work is that if you consistently put small snippets of information that have a good storytelling or a good story around them, at some point in time, you're gonna catch somebody's attention. As I said before, like, hey, Andrew, that blog post that you posted got the most views we've ever seen on our website, right? That will catch my attention. And maybe next time you send out a report, I will actually be interested in digging in further. I've mentioned this as well, but less is more. And Julian, this come, kind of comes up to your original thing that you put in the chat around building a dashboard that's helpful. You know, again, too many metrics kind of leads to this idea of paradox of choice, like which one's important, what is meaningful. And so if we can be consistent about just looking at one or two or three metrics uh, to catch people's attention, then maybe over time we can start to digest more information. But don't start by putting, you know, 30 things in front of somebody because it's going to become really overwhelming, including for yourself, right? So consider the, the idea that less is more when it comes to data and reporting. And then lastly, the right tools are really helpful in this process, right? If you have to go into Google and remember what report do I always pull from and I can't remember the date range, Having a dashboard, which we're gonna talk about in a second, we have a free one to share with you and we can get one set up for you if you'd like, is so important in making this really easy, right? It gives everyone access to the content. It pulls the same numbers every time. It makes it all automatic and really easy for you. So we're gonna focus in on these four things in this second section of this workshop. And then you're going to practice at the end of this on how you might be able to put this together in your reporting process. So just as sort of a grounding of where we are, right? We've done our metric selection. We've gone through questions one through three, and now we're gonna focus in on four and five and start to build out our data storytelling or our reporting. So question number four, like we said just a minute ago, is understanding who are we reporting to and what do they care about? You know, it's so important to understand this for anybody that works in communications. Um, you know that audience is a really important part of communications. It's the same whether you're communicating internally or you're communicating to your external audience. We need to understand who we are talking to. So what we like to do is create a profile, right? Uh, who are we reporting to? What is their role in the organization? What are their goals? Because theirs are going to be different than other people's. What actions on the site support moving their goals forward? What are the journeys that visitors take on the site to complete those actions? And then are there additional questions that this particular person might have about an area of the website? Um, 
Oftentimes, you know, we elevated before that some people aren't that interested in analytics, but one of the best things I can tell you to do is go and talk with them, sit down and say, Hey, I know that you put a lot of content in this area of the site and we've noticed X, Y, and Z. Are there specific questions that could help you do your job better? Let us know because we might be able to help you with that, right? And so I can't stress enough that sitting down with somebody, maybe over a coffee or having lunch, is a great way to understand how you can communicate better to those individuals. And so you'll see in our example worksheet, we do have this, this profile that we've built. And for the rest of today, we're just going to focus in on reporting to this particular profile. So we're talking about a program manager that, again, cares about our capacity building with the legal community. We're going to focus in on reporting about our event RSVPs. And from our first section of work, we know what our metrics are that include the visitor journey to get to that RSVP. And then um, we had a discussion with this program manager, and it turns out they have three different questions that are important to their work. Number one is, what marketing channels led to the most event page traffic? Which events are people most interested in? And that's our engagement area. And then how many RSVPs did we actually get? Right, That's our conversion. So we're going to look at that and how we might go through the process of Answer, you know, reporting RSVPs, reporting on the visitor journey, and reporting out to answer some of those questions. Last question here is, how can I build a narrative that makes metrics meaningful and actionable? And I saw this a few times in the chat at the outset of this workshop. So we're going to talk about some of the elements of ways in which we can effectively communicate data to folks. Number one is time span. When did this take place, right? Is it over a year? Is it a week? Is it a month? Um, I think it's important to ground our metrics in terms of when it took place. Number two is analyze the whole visitor journey, right? I mentioned this before, but I really view websites as a collection of visitor journeys. And at each stage, there's an opportunity to make things better. Right? Can we get more people to this page? Can we make this page more communicative so people will engage with it more and understand the value of the content more so that we can increase conversions? So it's really important to think about all of the different stages of that visitor's journey uh, where there might be opportunities or successes that we can celebrate together. Number three, context and comparison. Right? Uh, is this an increase, decrease, good? bad, but meh, who cares, right? Over time and over what time period, right? So one of the things that I really like to do is I think a lot of organizations have seasonality built into what's going on. So I like to compare things year over year. Um, let's say for instance, you're comparing um, donations, right? You wouldn't wanna compare month over month because we know that a lot of donations come in in December, not a lot come in in January typically. So comparing those two time periods aren't that meaningful. But if I compared, hey, how was this December versus last December? That's a real meaningful uh, metric that gives me context of what's going on. Make it relevant to our target audience. Again, answer those key questions. That's similar to what we just brought up. And then how can we make it actionable, right? I think oftentimes we get caught up with the fact that we need to know 100% that something was indeed causing an outcome. And I would like to reframe that to think about hypotheses. We think that this may have contributed to this. We think that you should try and test that going forward to see if we can continue to do that, right? So marketing and communications and websites a lot of times are all tests and we need to feel comfortable about sitting in that discomfort of we don't know, but let's test it, right? And so one of the ways that we can make things actionable is number one, to think about what could have contributed to something, put a hypothesis forward and saying, let's try and test this into the future. And I think it's okay as long as we are, you know, honest with ourselves that we don't know 100% of this stuff. So hopefully this is a template that I'm hoping that you can use in your life, uh, make adjustments to it if you want. But this is just a, a format that I think is really helpful in terms of 
developing a really quick and meaningful report to folks. Um, and so there's an example in our example worksheet that you're more than happy to steal from. But ultimately, we want to try and hit on all of those things that I just talked about in terms of elements of a good report. So number one, last month is our time period. We saw event calendar traffic increase to 1,253 visitors. That's our awareness metric. An increase of 43% year over year. That's our context, right? During the same time period, we saw 457 RSVPs. This is our conversion metric. An increase of 54% year over year. Users were most curious about the DACA webinar with 567 engaged sessions on that page. This is both answering a key question and delivering information about our engagement metric. And now we're getting into actionable. These increases were largely driven by LinkedIn traffic. That's our key question. We believe the increase in video posts have led to these results and our social media team should double down on that strategy. This is a hypothesis. We don't know, right? <laughs> what we're saying is let's test this again and see what happens. So um, that is one way to make things actionable. And uh, again, I think like sitting within some discomfort is an important thing to, um, to start to learn how to do. So before we get into the activity, I do want to share with you a dashboard that you all can use. Um, you can make a copy of this thing and fill in your own data if you would like. You can change any of the metrics. But this goes towards the idea of why we love, love, love dashboards, right? It checks all of the boxes that we talked about before in terms of focusing in on only a couple of key metrics. Um, and it tells a story, right? So number one, the reason we love it, there are free opportunities. Google Data Studio, which is now called Google Looker, which is a, a weird name, I think, <laughs> um, is a free service. So you can go up to get Google Data Studio. They have a lot of templates. I have one I can share with you. I actually have two I can share with you. And um, you can start putting your analytics in there for free. Number two is no gatekeepers, right? Um, I think it's really important to democratize the data and the reports that are taking place from our website. Um, rather than having people ask you to pull reports and you give it to them, I think it, it's important to give them the freedom and the time to look at data whenever they want, to pull the types of reports they want over a time span they want, um, and dashboards allow you to do that. Less is more, as we've talked about a whole lot, dashboards allow you to focus in on just a few options, and there are both free and paid options. So I mentioned Google Data Studio but some of you might be also familiar with something like Power BI, um, which is uh, part of the Microsoft Office suite, I believe. And there are other options as well. So if you wanna start with something that's free, I think Google Data Studio is a really great option. So just to give you a quick tour of this dashboard, this we made with fictitious data. We made it for our program management. Um, a program manager. But the cool things about this are number one, the person can come in here whenever they want. You can share this with whomever you would like. You can send a regular email to that person to remind them that this is ready. If you want to do it once a month or once a week, you can send it. The person can come in here, change the dates based on whatever they want. If they wanted to pull March numbers, they could do that. And then they can also, we can change all kinds of different filters like device category. You could do it based on traffic source. There's all kinds of options in here. And then you can see here, we've got our three key metrics that are telling us our data story about the engagement funnel. And then we can hop in and start to look at the key questions that our target audience has. So what are the most popular events, right? So um, just so you know, this is Google Analytics um, dummy content, so it doesn't make any sense based on what we're doing here, <laughs> but it's a good way to put anonymous content into here. So in this question, we can see the number of page views for each event. We can see how frequently we get engaged sessions for that page. We can see how many RSVPs each page got. And then our other question is what channels drove the most traffic, right? We can see, okay, uh, our paid search was second, our direct traffic was number one. 
your metrics will probably look a little bit more interesting here compared to the Google um, dummy data. But so this is a very, very simple interface. It allows us to only report on a few things. And what I really like is on a monthly basis, you can come in here, update the monthly report, and then make sure that it gets sent out to whoever, whomever you are reporting to. So these dashboards can be as complex or as simple as you would like. I would recommend starting with something pretty simple, right? And I think hopefully the metric selection process will help you decide what things to put on here and how to really slim things down. I want to offer uh, any, you know, an opportunity to, to connect with me one on one or really anybody on our team, but you can use this link or, you know, use your phone to shoot this QR code. And if you want to talk about analytics in any capacity, if you have questions about the technical transition to GA4, I heard a lot of people also say they were having some challenges navigating that interface. Happy to sit down with you and kind of walk through that. If there's anything that came out of this workshop that you want to review together in hopes of um, getting some clarity around this system overall, feel free to sign up. Um, how to do the technical implementation of analytics on your website. Some of these um, different conversions can actually be kind of hard to get at. And sometimes you need to use Google Tag Manager or something like that to make sure that they show up in your analytics. And then ultimately we will share this link with you um, for this dashboard, put it in the chat here. But if you have any questions about dashboards, how to get them set up, how to use this template to work for your analytics, happy to sit down and kind of walk through it with folks. And again, if there's anything else, you know, that are questions around non-analytics, we're happy to discuss. Really appreciate it. Um, Sia, do you wanna talk just about upcoming events? And then please, 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 we always wanna learn from you all. If there's any way that we can do these presentations better, please make sure to fill out the survey. We'd love to hear your feedback so that we can continue to deliver the information that's most important to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrew, for, and as I said, when we started, this was definitely an insightful time. We have some events coming up on Wednesday, the 24th. We're having a round table of with a focus on boundaries that work, learning about foundational skill sets towards setting boundaries for you, your organization, and your mission in order to boost collaboration, sustainability, and impact. On Wednesday, June 14th, we're talking about bye-bye hierarchies, ways to look at your organizational leadership in a different way. And then on Wednesday, July 12th, we have campaign planning and developing your documentation. Again, we are so glad that you chose to spend time with us today. We will be sending out a recording and all of the materials later on this week. Please, if you have not already, take a moment to fill out the survey. We do value your feedback and use this information to iterate our sessions and to continue to offer great opportunities like this to the community. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much for spending a little extra time with us. We appreciate it. And we hope to see you all very soon.